Welcome to another coding along session for the REST API of the board game REST API. We're going to provide a little upgrade to our REST API. So the previous one, if you have not seen it, the video is also on YouTube. Then we created the board game API working with a local file. So as you can see here in the code, this is the final code. I've uh, spruced it up a bit with some error handling, etc. And we write files to this board games.json file. You can see here even the test still remaining. Now, what are we going to do in this tutorial? We are going to connect this up to a Mongo database and actually make sure that everything is working with an online database instead of a local file on your PC. So let's see what you need before getting started. For starters, you need the code that we created in the last exercise. You've either created an own API that has at least a get all, a get one and a safe route, then it's okay to start with that. So if not, you can take the board game API from my GitHub repo in the comments below uh, or in Canvas, and you can start with that. You also need like a database, of course, to start working with. Now we created a database in one of the previous exercises in this course, so I will be reusing that one. So for those who don't have it, you can use a Mongo Atlas account. There's, uh, I created a database called Session 5. It's also good. And then a board games collection. In that collection are the, the three board games that are also in that text file. So we have some dummy data to work with. If you don't know how to set this up, look at the tutorial of setting up Mongo Atlas. And last but not least, we need Postman. Postman, we need to make calls. So we've created in the previous uh, tutorial for the board game API, we've created all the routes for all board games, the one board game and the save board game with all the details. You can still reuse them, but we're gonna make one adjustment uh, at the end of the video. So these all should still work. So with that out of the way, we have all the details here. Let's start with hooking up our Mongo database to our board game API. Good, to start, let's import our Mongo Express uh, package, I assume. Yeah, the, the, the NPM driver, the Node.js driver, as it will. So we'll open uh, a terminal here and we will install the MongoDB package. MongoDB. Oops, and uh, NPM install, of course. That's okay. Once we have installed that, we can, uh, I'm gonna run npm install as well because I don't think I have every package installed. Yes, perfect, up to date. Then when we have installed it, we're gonna hook it up at the top here. Now, if this is all unfamiliar to you, I would suggest to look at a previous tutorial that I will link in also in the description below if you are still unclear on how Mongo works. So require MongoDB. Now, for working with Mongo, I always use a config file because we will need to be able to create a connection to the actual server, to the actual Mongo server. For that, I have a config.json file. This consists for me personally, of course, is a URL that has all dummy data at this point. As you can see, I have an example username, still in Dutch, I'll change it. <laughs> example username and example password. These are, of course, not my passwords and my username, but I will be changing these behind the scenes in the montage, uh, and you should do the same. So what I suggest is to get that um, connection URL, this is the one, the base URL that you have to fill in. This one is my final URL. And then I have the database that I'm connecting to the password and the username for that user. So I would suggest create that config file. If you don't know, again, I refer to the previous tutorial to set that up. If I have that config file, I can import it. Uh, config. And uh, it's in the route folder, the, uh, the root folder, I'm sorry. So we can just require that as well. So now that we have all the info and uh, the means to connect to our database, 
Now we can actually do a connection, of course. So let me check. We need to create um, a client. Create the Mongo client to use. That is const client equals new Mongo client and which URL will we be, will be will we be using? Sorry for the stuttering. <laughs> the final URL, which is from my config file. All right, now that we have everything set up, now we can make our first connection. There are a couple of ways of doing this. We can uh, open and close the connection per route, or we can leave the connection open for as long as the API is open. Now, I would suggest to open and close it while needed, certainly for our use case, because we won't be using it like en masse. Uh, there, will, there will not be 1,000 to 10,000 of API calls. There are systems in place and best practices for those scenarios. But for our use case, I think it's better to just uh, create a connection at the point that we will be using it. Uh, maybe in, even in a different class if you want to, and then uh, getting the data further. Let's try with the return all board games from the file. So let's from the um, database. Let's try with that. And I'm going to change this. So as you can see, I read the file and I send back the JSON data. So what we are going to be changing is the read file part. Again, this is an asynchronous function. Perfect, because we are going to be using uh, the await statement to connect to our database. Um, finally, we will be making a connection. That means for Mongo, that means await client dot connect this will create the connection if this crashes then we get the error now we should by default log the error as well uh, send and i think i'm going to send the error log as as a adjacent data so i think this i don't know what type of error this is variable any <laughs> okay um now console log the error so that we for sure for sure know if there is something wrong and if we send back uh we will send back an object mm. error something went wrong and then the second part would be the value of the error and then just do this and see what it does so client connects we connect it and then we will get all the board games so let's try that the getting the correct connect collection is the first step uh, i think we can do it in one line to be fair let's try const dot oops const board games bgs let's call it bgs for short means it's client dot database which database well it's called session 5 to be fair this is the session 5 part so this is session 5 our collection is board games and then we need all the rest so session 5 dot collection which collection? Whoops. Collection is board games. And I can do a find statement on this dot find dot find. And how are we going to find? We're going to do everything. We're not going to put in a parameter and I'm going to convert it to an array. So again, this is a quick way of getting all the board games and we're going to send back the board games themselves. So normally the array is data, so we can send back that array. 
BGS. We already have some basic code. Again, before you even fine tune anything, always test in between. So let's test our code right now. All right, time to test it. We, I, I've, I've added some comments as well, so it's more clear that what, uh, what, what, what we are doing. So in this case, of course, we want to run our server. Nodemon index API is running. That's good. So now we can test out the all board game section. Let's see what it does. Something went wrong. Atlas error. I think I know what that is because my value, uh, my connection was incorrect. So of course I did that on purpose. This is to show you that the error system works. As you can see, we get a pretty neat uh, object back, um, capitalizing it. And we immediately get the error object that has that is also here in this log. So what do we see here? Um, the error itself is bath auth, authentication failed. So as you can see here, authentication failed. So give me a second and I will adjust my settings in my config.json file to make sure that everything is connected and that I have access to the server. All right, we got rid of the authentication error, but I got another issue. As you might see, so we just retrieve the BGS, the board games, and then send that back. If I call this, I get nothing back. Now, if I were to look into the um, documentation, I noticed, I would notice that the fine isn't a synchronous function. So let's split this up and to make you, to make you see the, the reasoning why, why I do this. So I'm going to call this Collie for collection. And afterwards I will get const board games and then Collie Find. Now, since this returns a promise, I am going to place a wait in front of this and let's see what it does. So I made a small change to it. Let's see what they return. Look at that. Amazing. I got everything that I need. Now I have the array with all the data that I need. I can send it back they can do with it what they want. I can even do some changes here if I want to. But that is basically all there is to it of connecting the database up to your REST API. Now, one thing to close, literally close, is the, the connection to the client, of course. Once you're done, I always would suggest, suggest to close the client since we are opening it here, doing an, an, um, a query here. Then after the catch, I would always do the finally double L easy to mistake and then await client.close. Now, of course, this can be done in a multitude of different ways. You can have like a small function or extra piece of code here in a separate module that does the open the connection, close the connection, all that, all there is to it. Um, I'll leave that up to you to uh, work with those best practices as you see fit and in different uh, options. So let's try it again now that we have added the client close. And it still works. I still get all my board games. Perfect. That is our first part up and running. Now let's just try and add the other two functionalities as well. The next route that we're going to be handling is, of course, to get one specific board game from the selection. Now we can do this on a multiple uh, in, in multiple ways, um, as it has been done here, is that we read the complete file and then loop over it if they have a specific ID. Like, um, well, looping is not not um, needed here, but we basically get all the data and then filter the data what we need. Now, of course, in a database, that's not always the best solution. Why? Imagine you have uh, the database of Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek has, I think, about more than more than ten thousands of board games in there. Imagine each time that you request your favorite board game to look at that page, your website downloads all the board game data, and then in the JavaScript it filters the one that that you need. That's not very beneficial. So in this case, now we're going to be using Mongo queries to actually just get one of the database. So we only get the data back that we actually need. 
So let's change this function. I'm going to close this up. We're going to make some um, copies here. I will copy paste this mostly. In this try statement, the read file is done. The selection is also done. So we're going to copy paste this. So again, the ID is in here. I'm going to clean the log and just say ID is located in the query. Rec query ID. So of course, this has some control mechanisms, as in the ID should be present. So only if there is an ID, then we will get the uh, the data. Let me check. So we have the file, we have the try, we have the catch uh, client connect. We are also going to add our finally so that the connection is closed at the end. Voila. And of course, session five, board games, perfect. Now the find one is the one that we are going to be... Um, getting specifically we're going to make a specific selection on the database now if i'm not mistaken i can look at the database as uh, sorry i look i look at the documentation as well so here we have the database our crud operations we have the mongo node.js driver so we have read operations retrieve data and then see what what, what we find here so find and as you can see, you can add more data in there. So find or find one. Find one is more appropriate for our case. But as you can see here, um, there is more data below. But if you add something in the find, you can add things in there like the name needs to be Lemony Snicket. The date needs to be greater than this, lower than this. So all the parameters of getting one specific entry you can find on this documentation page so again the mongodb drivers you can find online uh, or in the description below now that we can not now that we know how to find let's, let's 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 just try one so as you can see here find one it has runnable examples i'm just going to scroll down a bit because of course i know the, the basis of it as you can see query for a movie that has the title the room so we make a query that has an object with the property we are looking for and the value we are looking for. We have even more options as sorting. I don't need that at the moment. Um, but something interesting as well, include only the title and the IMDB fields in the return document. So that is interesting because we don't really need the ID of MongoDB. Let's try to add that as well. So I'm going to copy paste this and then rework it. The ID has to be equal to a specific one. Now, let's see how our data is looking. We have the BGG ID. That's the one that we need because that's a specific ID from BoardGameGeek. The object ID, that's the one from Mongo itself. So to work with that, you need some other logical steps. So in our case, BGG ID needs to be the same as the ID we got from the URL. Cool. The options sort matched documents. We do not need sorting, but I really only want to get back um, all the data, that, but not the ID. So let's see if it works. If we just say not the ID and then let's try it out. Uh, in this case, find one movies. We don't need that. So we can do find one query options. And we're going to remove the two array function and see what it does. We can delete this. Board game. If it has data, then we can try it. So again, we have created some code. We will try it out. And let's test it in Postman. All right, so our API is still running. Let's test it in Postman. I know that Terra Mystica will, will be returned. Or let's see, you know, Gloomhaven. 
it returns every oh gloomhaven doesn't have a board game id so that might be so this is a, a piece of the the data that is just wrong um, so this has a board game id let's try and get food chain magnet 175914 so we go to the request of one board game and instead of the id of terra mystica let's just try and add this or you can do it here as well let's see what it does events events count we don't get a lot with that all right after some looking around and testing it i found the solution and it was a problem with my data imagine that so if we go to the board game uh, collection on mongo atlas you, you notice that i said that gloomhaven was incorrect because it was missing an id well i've added an id now look at the difference we have the id here here and on the bottom here now watch closely here there are two um yeah double quotes so that means this is a string these are numbers now if i look for one two zero six seven seven let's try it again i logged the query now that we are looking for so let's try and do that one two zero six seven seven and look at the console log of my so it cannot be found look at here the query is board game id bgg id quote one two zero six seven seven so it's looking for a string while of course in our database we only have a number so this is something that mysql of course does better uh out of the box is that it forces the type on it uh, if there was a mismatch between the search criteria and the actual type of the column, it would actually give us a more dedicated error of, hey, you're looking for a string inside a number field that doesn't work. Something like that. Good. So now that we know that, let's try and unify our data first. So we have numbers. That's good. And we have strings. Now, in this case, this is not a number we are ever going to calculate with. If we are, if you have numbers in there that is like age and and that is needed for statistics, of course you need numbers then integers. But in our case, a string is more than fine enough because the only way we are ever going to use this data is either in a string to access the board game URL, for example, uh, or to just pu publicly show it on the page. So two ways of adjusting this: either you can go all numbers or you can go all strings. So in this case, I can add this. And I can change this field to uh, an int32, for example. Let's see what type it takes here automatically. An int32, yeah. So I can go integer, but then I need to change my code. So an example in here, I need to make this a number. So I'm going to cost this to a number. So that means that our ID will be cost to a number. And if I do some examples now, one two zero six seven seven gets me Terra Mystica. One seven four four three zero should give me Gloomhaven. Perfect. So that works. Now we're gonna do the reverse, so we don't need the number. But now you know what to look out for if you are not getting your results. Make sure your query is okay, and um, you can uh, adjust your data accordingly. Now. The cool thing about find one is, is that it automatically gives back the actual object. As you can see, my post works. This works. Could not be found worked. And if something went wrong, then uh, I could give back an error. So I'm going to finalize this by adjusting all my data to strings. This string. Where is the S string? sometimes hard to work in such a close-up uh, version update and then the last one and now everything is a string and should be able to be easily read straight from the id that i got from my url so again once you made a change always do a last check so i'm gonna get my code the number is gone i'm gonna go to postman i press send i get gloomhaven i try another one one two zero six seven seven send and i get it so that is our uh, get one board game route we're done with that so on to posting new data to our database
All right, so the last route that we are going to be converting is the save a board game route. Now, of course, the all the validation is still in there. So if there is no ID, no name, no genre, no mechanisms, no description, then it will throw an error. Now, of course, the ID itself, I changed this because in the database it's called BGG ID. So I'm going to change that here as well. If there is no that one, uh, let me check one board game. Yep, save board game. So I, I adjusted the postman. Again, if board games bgg id but this is again for the files so we're going to delete the whole file part and we are going to send it to the database now first steps again this is a good validation we will leave that read the file we don't need that parse it we don't need that as well validation for doubles that is important we can uh do a check here as well I will remove this part because we will not be doing this and that's the actual error that that we uh, return BGG ID BGG ID um, that is to save it in the file we don't need that and to write the file we don't need that so BGG ID so make sure all, all the rest is there uh, we have an error and now we can add the Mongo specific stuff. So again, await collection query. Uh, do we need a query? I don't think, I, I don't know. Let's, let's try to get the basics done. Connect to the database, get the collection. And then of course, finally, await client close. We have done that as well, perfect. And now to write a new board game. Now the board game itself, the object needs to be of course the same. So BGG, name, genre, mechanisms, description. Um, to make sure that we only write away those and not the whole body, if there is more stuff into the body, for example here, dummy, then it will also be written to the database. We don't want that. So we will create a new object Let's board game. Uh, let's call it new board game just to be sure. The new board game. And that is actually the, uh, what, what do we have? We have the BGG ID. And that is of course the rec body dot BGG ID. And now you can basically just move over all the data that you want name uh, genre I thought and you can start typing with that as well mechanisms always a fun word to write make sure you don't make any always if something goes wrong always check the spelling because it's such a quick and easy mistake to make and you can curse so much for this description Description. This is the new board game. Uh, the moment it's done. Um, before we do that, of course, we will validate for double board games and check if it already exists. How do we do that? We do a selection and we can actually use the same code as we did here. Find one. If find one gets the board game, that we are trying to save, then we need to show uh, an error. If BG, if it exists, then we need to actually, whoops. If the board game exists, we need to send a status back. Rest status, bad request, board game already exists with BG ID, etc. And of course, after that, a return statement because we don't want the code to continue. So this is checking the database. If it's already there, perfect. Next up, create a new object. Create the new board game object. And then save it. And there's a very easy function to do that. Insert into the database. 
And then of course, after that, send back a success message. The insert one function can be used for that. So let's insert result. If you want to use that, you can do that. Await the collection dot insert one. As you can see, it will have auto completion. I will only insert one and then I can just do new board game and I'm saving the board game to the database. If this doesn't crash and it will continue, you can send a return message back. If it will crash, it will be caught in the error. Of course, we will um, do our error handling a bit more <laughs> proper this time. I think we only did it in the beginning. Yes. So let's try and make sure we give back structured errors. Let's try in the first one, we, we did it. In the second one, we did it, didn't. So we also place it there. And of course, in the save board game, we do that as well. Consistency is key. Clean error handling is something that can save your life or at least your sanity when you're searching for issues. Okay, we've coded it. Now it's time to test it. Okay, so we're here in Postman and I have the board game here, Tapestry. Tapestry does not exist yet. Let's try and insert that. Just press send and see what it does. Error, something went wrong. <laughs> okay, query is not defined. Okay, there are some bugs in here. Of course, find one. We are finding one with a query that doesn't exist in the safe. Uh, so we are finding... We don't need a query. We can do it immediately in here. We can find something with the board game ID equal to rec.body.boardgameid. Okay, that should fix that issue. Send, successfully saved. Well, how can we check? We check the, the database. As you can see, I only three. You can do a refresh here, the right top. And then, as you can see, and then, as you can see, we have Terra Mystica, Food Chain Magnet, Gloomhaven, and perfectly, we have Tapestry. So our insert works. Now let's try and test our validation if we send another one. Bad request, board game already exists. Perfect. Do we see multiples in here? We only see one. So our validation works and we can continue with that. Um, I think we're done then with our example and our demo. So we've hooked up MongoDB. We have replaced the file with an actual database connection. And now we can actually, in this case, I will delete the data because I don't need it anymore. And we have a finalized REST API hooked up to Mongo. Congratulations. I hope you learned something from this coding along video. The next step would be to place this API on a cloud platform to host it so you can keep using it. So with that in mind, I'll see you in the next video.